Okay, I'm back. Continuing on, we can look at this watershed protection tab layer, which um, if we close the river management tab, we can see is on the same hierarchy. Um, and so first of all, we can see dams in the landscape. Uh, so if we zoom out, we can see um, dams here. This one is on Richmond Pond, and you know there's a couple others. But Beth doesn't seem like she's in too much pr trouble. Um, and these dams are all um, kind of ranked um, f according to their hazard potential, um, and some of them aren't. Um, but as I said, Beth isn't in trouble from dams. Um, and you know, there's a lot of this is kind of uh, bureaucratic, and um, you know, it's not helpful. Um, but we can skip those and we can turn on this one, which is wetlands. Um, and if you go to the top of this, this little uh, drag bar is the transparency. So we can kind of make this invisible and see what's underneath of these so-called wetland areas um, and these oxbows and, you know, places along the river are classified as wetlands. And if you look at the resource for farmers page, um, down here, I've given it a three, um, is this wetland classification page, actually from the Indiana Department of Transportation. So you should look at that. But it basically says that there's three main types of wetlands, and they class them as class one, two, and three. And so class one are wetlands that are 50% or more uh, disturbed and this means either through development from humans or 50% um, more or or more of the wetland is um, crowded by invasive species or just the wetland doesn't have a hydrologic function anymore um, and so when you think of wetlands, they're really important in the landscape, especially along river edges, it, um, for, for the purpose of mitigating floods. Um, wetlands kind of serve as areas that the river can overflow its banks and flood and will still uh, stay alive or will still function. So imagine a river overflowing into a field. It's going to kill those crops and maybe um, flood the field for a while. But if it overflows into a wetland, the wetland um, habitat and ecosystem there can sustain all of that water and will absorb it and essentially act as a large sponge to suck up the water and the energy that a flooding river will give it. So these are interest, uh, interesting areas and important areas. Um, and, you know, we can turn this off and kind of look at it. Like here, you know, there, that's a field. Maybe it's not a wetland. Um, but, you know, from the satellite imagery and the criteria that the uh, Agency of Natural Resources has selected classifies it as a wetland. Um, and so these are, are kind of rough a little bit. This one's even on the road. Um, so the road was built on wetlands. Um, but they're important for showing areas. And you can measure this um, with the measurement tools that I'll get to later, um, if you like. Um, but keep in mind the importance of wetlands on and around your property and how they can help mitigate flood damage. Um, and so I already showed you these uh, floodways that, um, that the stream geomorphic assessment teams have gone out and determined. Um, but we can also see these special flood hazard areas that FEMA um, uh, that FEMA has given out. And so if we look at these areas, um, this AEAAO and this 0.2%, um, you can kind of read here what they are, um, but they get cut off. So if you right click on this, uh, what we can see here is um, Li'i is a 1% annual chance floodplain with elevation. So it has elevation data. 
The orange A is 1% annual chance floodplains without elevations. And the yellow AO is the zones um, with shallow flooding of one to three feet. And so um, these are your 10 year floods because it's 1% chance of annual flood. Um, I mean, a 100 year floodplain. Uh, so these are 100 year floodplains um, with elevations and with one to three feet of flooding. And this gray is your 0.2% annual flood chance flood hazard zone. Um, so that will be your 500 year floodplain. Um, and so when you have these on, um, not in this area because they haven't done the stream geomorphic assessments here, but um, in the areas that this is available, um, you can see the areas of the river that are going to be flooded in 100 or um, in 500 years. And so when we go back up here and turn the transparency on, you can see how much of your field is going to be in that floodplain. And that's very useful. Um, and so um, there's special flood hazard areas, which are the same. Um, and this, the difference, the only difference between these two is that this is preliminary and this is everything um, that they have so far. Um, and then, so that's a really useful tool. Um, but perhaps I should go and show you the measurement tools that will help you um, in, in, in the long run. So if you go up here to this measurement tab, instead of the getting around tab, click the measurement tab. What we can do here is measure distance and area as well as the elevation. So to measure distance, it's just going to be a straight line. So uh, we can even zoom in a little more and you know pick a starting point, any point you want. And you can measure in any direction you want, um, as far as you want. So I can measure the whole distance of the field, or just this segment, or to the middle of the field, whatever you want. And so you just click, and it'll give you that elevation, I mean, that feet. Um, and you can do it multiple times. Um, and see all of these uh, measurements, which is really useful. And up here, you can change it. So if you want yards, or meters, or miles, or nautical miles, f f I don't know why you would use that. Um, <laughs> maybe if you're on the the b the bay or um, or a lake or something, whatever. Um, but so that's what you can do with the measured distance. But you can also measure area. And this is cool um, because you can very accurately draw the boundaries of your field. Um, so you just go along clicking wherever you want. You know, I could do this field, or I could do this field plus this little patch of what looks like wetlands, or I could measure some trees if I wanted to, or whatever I want. So I'm just going to do this field for now. And you can get it very accurate. You know, you can, you can, you can exclude pieces that you know you want to uh, not cultivate, and that's a little annoying. It gets in your way, but um, you can click around it and still be fairly accurate. Um, but you know, go along and and um, just create the boundaries, and when you're done double click um, and then the um, the area will pop up in this case it's acreage and you can do feet per acres uh, oh you can find the perimeter this will show you the perimeter in any uh, measurement you want or acres in any measurement you want um, and so it looks like this is about 25 acres this just this one field um, <laughs> probably with that it is 25 acres um, but so that's a really useful tool and the best part is that you can use this when any of these other layers are on so if you have floodways you can literally go through and trace that uh, you can turn it down to transparent so you can only trace that part that you, kn you know your field is on 
it, this is a very very powerful tool and very helpful um, in many ways and this elevation profile I think is also very useful so what I want to do just as an example is I'll take the elevation profile from the middle of the Winooski River all the way to the top of Beth and Bruce's property and so you just double click and it takes a little bit because it's a fairly complicated process um, but I'll just move this map up here so you can see the line and um, and the graph and so here we go this is a map of my transect so the Winooski River looks like it's just at 300 feet there and um, then here this is the bank and it goes up the bank um, and then it looks like it goes flat across the railroad and then there's another little hop up and it goes over the road um, and then it looks like that might be um, a little berm next to the road and then it's pretty flat here so it's at like I don't know maybe the edge of the field is 180 meters um, and you can get this in feet or any other um, um, or it shows feet here. Oh, sorry, the distance is in meters. So uh, uh, about 200 yards from the middle of the river. Uh, so 309 feet is where the field starts. And you can go along, and this little red dot will follow your transect across the graph. Um, and so you see that here it goes up a little bit. And by the time you get to this field here, you're at a much higher elevation than this lower field. And so this is, you know, a very helpful tool when you're thinking of a potential flood that may flood your land, but, you know, if it only goes up to 309 feet, uh, this field up here isn't going to get flooded at all. You know, this is going to be uh, 20... Uh, 19, uh, no, uh, 11 feet higher, no, 21 feet higher, um, 23 feet higher, excuse me, um, but, so that looks like a little hill, but, so this might be lower, but you get the point of that, you can see the difference between, you know, just two fields that from above look like they're the same elevation, and that is going to be very helpful, um, when you're anticipating these floods. Um, and so let's go back to getting around and pan a little bit, take a little break. Um, and so, um, another tab that could be fairly useful is this geology tab. Let me close the watershed protection tab. And so here we can see hydric soils, um, and zoom out just a little bit to get uh, variety and so these hydric soils are soils that are defined as saturated or flooded long enough during the growing season that they develop anaerobic conditions meaning no oxygen and so these uh, correspond to wetlands essentially because um, aerobic soils are or soils with lots of oxygen in them are going to be good for growing things and anaerobic are going to be kind of moist and wet and you know productive for some plants but maybe not all plants and so these hydric soils kind of relate to um, wetland areas and high moisture contents um, that'll create these anaerobic conditions on the upper part um, so those are really cool um, to look at. Um, and then also, here's a soil for prime agriculture. So it doesn't cover all of the land, but it covers some, and it classifies these agricultural land, or prime agricultural lands on the local and the statewide and the prime levels. So you can see who has good farms. Again, with this transparency tool, you can see that this farm is on prime agricultural land. Lucky them. Um, and so that's another really useful tool just to look, if you're curious, um, at land surrounding you or if you're thinking of buying some land somewhere, 
Um, but anyway, so this drinking water and groundwater protection probably isn't going to help us very much, but you know, you can classify groundwater and see private wells and whatnot if you want. Um, but those are basically the most important layers in assessing sh uh, flooding and uh, flooding hazard and risk management.